All right. Welcome back to our CNT 140 uh, class on land wiring. Uh, welcome to chapter 9. This chapter we'll be discussing user cords and their connectors. So, uh, the objectives that we'll be highlighting in this chapter will be the uh, modular user cords, uh, modular, um, modular end connectors, the RJ45, basically find out what's in the name, connector pinouts, 8-pin modular wiring patterns, modular cord assembly. This chapter we will describe the various types of connectors that are used to terminate cable ends. Now we have previously covered uh, station cable termination, so in this section uh, we will concentrate on the 8-pin modular plugs that are used on freestanding cables. Uh, such as patch cords and user cords, sometimes uh, just called user cables. Uh, we will also look at the user cords that are used in the work areas and the equipment rooms for connections uh, to our network hardware. Now, this would be a good time to point out the distinction between cables and cords. Uh, as used here in many of in the many of the standards, obviously both cables and cords used in telecommunications employ jacketed multi-pair cables, but it is customary to refer to the flexible stranded wire plug terminated cables that connect to the workstations, hubs, patches as cords. Now, this is the convention followed by most of the standards. The usage rule is probably more consistent when referring to patch cords, which are inevitably referred to as cords terms user cord and user cable are used interchangeably as the terms the equipment cord and equipment cable. Now for consistency in this book and in the lessons we have tried to use the word cable to refer to any solid conductor cable that are terminated in a jack or punch down and use the word cord to refer to any stranded conductor cables that are terminated in modular plugs. With regard to coax cables they are normally referred to as cables, regardless of their location. By the same token, no pun intended, um, for the IBM uh, data connector cables are normally referred to as cables. Both of these uh, last cable types are identical in composition and termination, uh, whether they are used uh, in a wall or by the equipment user. So let's look at cable and connectors. Now, we, are, we will primarily, primarily cover modular cable connectors in this chapter. Coax connectors and IBM data connectors are considered to be legacy connectors and are covered in Appendix B in your books. Fiber optic connectors are described uh, in Chapter 6 and 7 and then again uh, in Chapter 11 and I will not be covering them here. Now, of the three other types of connectors, the modular connector, is obviously the most favored for modern land wiring because of the increasing use of unshielded twisted pair uh, cable. Coax has long been used for traditional Ethernet and Argent lands, but it's gradually being phased out in most locations. The data connector is, uh, without a doubt, uh, an important connector in shielded twisted pair wiring systems and it is now included in the TIA 568-C standard. So if we look at the modular connectors. The modular connector used in LAN uh, systems is the same connector that is used in modular telephone wiring systems. This connector is available in several possible sizes and pinout configurations ranging from uh, 4 to 8 positions with from two to eight contact pins. The popular styles are often referred to by universal service order code to USOC RJ number. Now even though the connector may not be may not actually be used in the designated application called for by the USOC code. Uh, for example the common six pin modular telephone plug is often called an RJ11 and the eight pin modular plug is often called an RJ45 uh, guilty as charged. The 8-pin modular plug is used in the TIA 568C wiring standard for both telephone and data. The 8-pin modular plug is also the connector that is used for the 10-base T, 100-base T, 1,000-base T, 
100 VG AnyLAN, and token RAN, UTP, and many other LAN applications. This 8-pin modular plug is probably the most uh, subject to name abuse because it resembles the specialized RJ45 connector. However, the RJ45 wiring pattern, which includes an interface programming resistor, is so radically different from that of the 568A uh, and B, uh, it should not be called by that name at all. In this book, we've tried to always use the 8-pin modular or simply modular description as it leads to less confusion. And in truth, all modular plugs are identical until terminated. Then they should probably be called by the name that reflects their wiring pattern. For example, you can certainly connect uh, only four pins of an 8-pin modular plug in a 100 base, uh, 10 100 base T pattern. It would not truly be either T568A or B because both require eight connected pins. It would not be an RJ45 because the wiring pattern would be wrong and the programming resistor would be missing. So why not just call it a 10100 base T connector as that would be the, its purpose and its unique wiring pattern. If all eight wires are connected in an approved pattern, uh, you could call it a TIA connector or even a T568A or B. Well, until the habit has changed, we will probably still uh, find people who call the connectors RJ45s. However, uh, the wrong term might uh, would be would be in use. The 8-pin modular plug that is used in the standard LAN wiring is specified by the IEC 6037 detail specs uh, for connectors, eight-way including fixed and free connectors with common mating features. This is the plug that is specified in the 568C and its related documents. Modular connectors are primarily intended for terminating cables with stranded connectors. And in fact, the original connector was designed to terminate a flat cable containing from two to eight stranded conductors. It was also designed primarily for the audio frequencies of telephone uh, lines, although the connector is officially rated for use up to three megahertz. Unfortunately, the Industry not only uses the connector at frequencies far above that, but also needs to place twisted pair conductors encased in round cable jacket into the modular plug. To allow the use of the modular uh, connector at LAN frequencies from 10 to 100 megahertz, the TIA has simply specified performance criteria, primarily attenuation and near-end crosstalk, that the connector must meet. As long as these criteria are met, the connector can be placed in the app on applications up to category 560AD. The category uh, 6 plugs and jacks, while physically compatible with their 5E cousins, are uh, specially configured to reduce near end crosstalk when they're mated. The electrical comp uh, compensation uh, can actually cause a link failure when CAT6 connectors are mated with CAT5E connectors. Modular connectors are available for solid wire, although some authorities discourage using solid wire for cords, even with these uh, special connectors. The difference between the two connector designs is shown here behind me. Now, as you can see, the modular pin in a flat contact with a, with a pointed end that pierces through the installation of the wire and then makes electrical contact with stranded wires. The contact may have one or more points uh, and if this contact is used on solid wire, the contact may uh, slip off the side of one of the points and then make intermittent contact or no contact at all. So for this reason, the solid wire uh, contact has three pointed fingers at the bottom uh, that are offset slightly so that the wire is centered. The insulation is dis displaced and the wire held in uh, constant contact with the opposing fingers. You can also see why it is bad practice to use the wrong type of connector for the type of wire that you're using. Shielded modular plugs have been developed that use a metal sleeve around the plug to provide shielding of the connection. Now these plugs require jacks that are compatible for the shielded plugs for proper functioning of the shield. Shielded cables can also have their shield drain connected to one of the unused pins on the regular 8-pin plug. But the standard connection uh, pattern of 4x4 
balanced pairs is lost when the configura this configuration is used. Shielded connectors should be used with SCTP cable and shielded equipment jacks. Stranded uh, pin numbering and wiring patterns for the 8 pin modular connector uh, were shown in figure 610 and I have um, uh, an image of that up here behind me. Now the T568A and B patterns featured in the TIA568C are also shown in the top of, uh, of the figure here along with other patterns for specified applications. The two wire 10 base T pattern is also applicable to 100 base TX but not 100 base T4. 1000 base T or VG uh, which require all four pairs. Now notice that the 5 A and B patterns actually support several other applications including virtually all the LAN connections for Ethernet, ARCnet, token ring, and the PMD patterns for ATM. The key to whether an application can be supported is the pairing of the wires that connect to the plug. For example, the TIA patterns both put pairs on pin combinations 1, 2, 3, 6, and 4, 5, and 7, 8, although the in differing pair order. Some patterns, however, pair the pair wires 1 uh, through 8, uh, 1, 8, 2, 7, 3, 6, and 4, 5, which places the outer four pins on different pairings. If your connection required pairings on a different pattern, that was wired in the cable, the result will be a split pair condition which causes severe performance impairment above 1 MHz or so. That is why choosing the correct pattern for your equipment is so important. Fortunately, virtually, virtually all LAN equipment can be supported on either of the TIA patterns. Now, as the figure shows behind me, the recommended dimensions for an optimum modular termination plug. The dimensions are taken from uh, the Annex B of the tia 58 c and notice that the crossover of conductor 6 occurs inside the plug uh, forward of the strain relief uh, tap. Now this is a little different from the, st from the standard practice which places the crossover just outside the tap. Also notice the length on an untwisted wire that exists between the, the plug body. Uh, it is this untwist that hampers the performance of the plug in very high frequency environments. The step-by-step -step procedure for terminating a cable in a modular plug is as follows. Now you can follow along here in the figures behind me as well. Now begin by removing the cable jacket, minimum of 20 millimeters, of the end of the conductors. <coughs> From the end of the conductors, place the pairs in the order of the pins that they'll be terminated on 1, 1, 2, 3, 6, 4, 5, and 7, and 8. The color of the first two pairs depends on whether you use the 568A or 568B. Flatten the cable jacket at the end to place the pairs side by side. Untwist the pairs back to the jacket, placing the wires of each pair in the proper or order according to the color code as shown in the figure behind me. Now arrange the wires so that they are parallel and lay flat. Cross the wire for pin 6 over the pin 4 and 5 wires such that the crossover is, more, is no more than 4 millimeters in from the edge of the jacket. Trim the conductors uh, to approximately 14 millimeters uh, from the edge of the jacket. Place the plug over the conductor so that, they're, uh, so that they extend all the way to the bottom of the termination uh, slot and the jacket extends at least 6 millimeters inside the plug body. Crimp the plug using a modular uh, crimping tool. After both ends of the cable have been terminated, test the connections for continuity and proper conductor placement. A crimp tool with a machined crimping die should be used for the best connections. A typical crimp tool is shown behind me. A proper crimp tool which uh, costs as much as $100 to $200 but will uh, be well worth the expense. The tool should have a ratchet action that will not allow the jaws to open until the plug has been fully crimped. Inexpensive tool designs that were adequate for the smaller 6-pin modular telephone connectors will typically fail to properly crimp the inside pins, pins 3, 4, uh, 5, and 6, when the design is ex uh, extended to an 8-pin width. This may or may not cause immediate failure of the connection, but you will have problems over time even if the connection initially tests good. You can inspect the plug to see if it is properly crimped by looking at the plug ends. 
a properly trimmed plug will have all eight contacts fully engaged and even at the tops which are uh, which will be very slightly below the plastic channels between the contact pins. An improperly crimped plug will show a distinct rounding upward of the end contacts. Um, side action crimp tools may favor the contacts on one side of the plug. The plug should also be inspected from the front and top to ensure that the contacts have not drifted to the side as can happen with inexpensive modular plugs. Uh, as simple as these plugs are, they are still significant, there are still significant differences in their quality uh, and it would be uh, now it would not be a proper it would not be proper in discussion of land cable terminations to ignore the problems that result from the choice of the classic 8 pin modular plug and its mating jack as a standard um, UTP connector. These components are responsible for the majority of limitations with this generation of high speed networking. The connector as stated before, was designed for frequencies well below 3 MHz and it has very poor characteristics at frequencies approaching 100 MHz. The nearing crosstalk performance of the plug and jack is so bad at 100 MHz that you will see few manufacturers quote performance margins that exceed the TIA performance standard by more than 1 or 2 dB. If they quote a margin at all, now, test equipment manufacturers even create specialized low near-end crosstalk adapters or digital processing techniques to compensate for the performance deficiency of the, of the modular connector in their own test equipment. Nevertheless, with quality materials, proper assembly pr procedures, careful workmanship, and proper testing, the modular connector can support the highest performance metallic cable networks in wide use today. Let's talk about the user cords. User cords are the final connection step in a LAN wiring system. They are the cables that connect between the installed universal wiring system and the network equipment. They exist on both ends of a link, at the work area and in the wiring closet. In the most modern LAN installations, the telecommunications room will contain wiring hubs that uh, consolidate all these station cables into a contiguous network. Telecommunications room that contain network equipment in the form of hubs, repeaters, servers are also equipment rooms, which add a few requirements over the over and above those for a simple telecommunications room. But we will just call call them uh, telecommunications rooms or TRs to keep things simple. Now user cords include workstation cords and equipment cords. Technically, user cords do not include patch cords, which are part of the horizontal cross connect. Sometimes, all modular cords are called patch cords, regardless of their function. But we will make a distinction between true patch cords and user cords. Patch cords, which were covered in the last chapter, are essentially the same as user cords except for length and color. User cords are a required part of the, of the channel the total end-to-end -end LAN connection, but they are not part of the basic link or permanent link, both of which exclude user cords. These terms are defined by the 568C.1, Section 11. Cabling transmission performance and test requirements. And they are very useful in describing the component parts of a cable link. The theory is that a cable plant could be installed and tested before any of the user network hardware is installed. Now, to do the testing, we need to have performance specifications uh, for the portion of the horizontal cabling that excludes the user cables. That portion is called the basic link or permanent link. However, channel performance levels are also defined. So we could also test with the user cables in place. In fact, that type of test is the ultimate assurance that a link meets the requirements for a particular category of operation. Now, more information on channel and permanent link is included in chapters 1 and chapter 15. Now, the construction of user cords are flexible four pair cables terminated at either end in an 8 pin uh, modular plug. 
The cords may be provided in various lengths as needed for the application. The cords should meet the transmission and construction requirements for patch cords in the 568C, as user cords are not explicitly defined elsewhere uh, in that standard. The color code for the conductors and the wiring pattern connections for the modular plug are the standard configuration as shown in the first part of this chapter, as well as in Chapter 2 and Chapter 5. Either the 568, T568 or B pattern may be used as long as both ends of the cords match. The standard also sh sh uh, allows an alternative color pattern consisting of eight solid colors uh, that can be used for user cords. User cords are made from a, from a 24 gauge stranded thermoplastic insulated conductors arranged into four pairs with an outer thermoplastic jacket as the one shown behind me. Conductors of 22 gauge wire may be used. Now if the cord meets the same performance requirements, but you must then uh, be certain that the connector plugs are designed for the larger wire size. The various jacketing materials are described in Chapter 5. Stranded wire is used because of its flexibility. Now from a technical uh, standpoint, solid wire could be used, but it lacks flexibility and is more difficult to connect with the modular uh, plugs. Uh, in most locations, non plenum insulation such as PVC is acceptable. PVC is uh, also much more flexible than most plenum rated plastics and it is more easily tinted. The outer jacket color should be appropriate for the office environment. Some of the cable manufacturers offer Cat 5E cables in a bright color to distinguish it from low category uh, wire. There is no need to use this bright color in your work areas. The cable should be marked to indicate that, that the category, if there is any, any, is any doubt. Compatibility with the work area electrical uh, color cords is uh, desirable for user cords. Many colors are available, but customary colors of beige or ivory, gray and black are commonly available for user cords. Screen or SCTP uh, user cord construction and performance are described in uh, Chapter 8 under the screened SCTP patch cords. Ca um, user cords have the same performance category uh, designations as the other portions of the horizontal cabling system. However, since the 8-pin modular cords are very similar to non ran telephone cords, you should be certain that the cords you use are certified to at least CAD 3 or 5E levels as appropriate. Cables are often called data grade by suppliers. Now this is an older classification system that simply indicates that the cables offer a little higher performance than telephone grade cables. Unfortunately, you need to know exactly how much better the performance will be. So insist on the proper certification of category 3, 5B, or 6 as needed for your systems. Now of course, if you are actually connecting telephone hardware, which is certainly permitted to be uh, permitted by the Universal Telecommunications Cabling, then the telephone grade user cables are adequate. However, they do not actually meet the requirements of the TIA and other standards and may eventually get mixed in with the high performance categorized cables. User cords should be marked with the rated category of operation as shown here behind me. Now the proper marking is category and a number, whether it be 3, 5B, or 6, so cat N, or a letter just for C for category within the category number enclosed. Uh, categorized cable is normally marked on the jacket. Now while the connections may or may not have their own markings, pre-assembled cable, pre cables should be made from properly certified components and should bear an additional marking indicating that the assembly meets workmanship standards or has been tested to the appropriate category. Now if we look at length and routing. Now according to the guidelines you must limit the length of your user cords in both the work area and in the wiring closet. The work area cords should be less than 5 meters or 16 feet if possible. The cords in the wiring closet 
uh, require a little simple math um, as the length guidelines for the user cords are not separately specified. The total length of the equipment cords, patch cords, and cross-neck jumpers in telecommunications room should be less than 5 meters. The length of the user slash equipment cord will have to be taken from the total allowance. Uh, the standards allow 10 meters, 33 feet, uh, patch cords and jumpers. The two end area lengths do not uh, quite add up to this, to, to this total because of rounding up or down. Now you might think that 5 meters of user cable for the workstation might be a little short in some locations and you would, you would be right. Now this number is a recommendation, it's not, man it's not mandatory. Now the 10 meter limit is, is mandatory however, so if you need longer cables in the work area, you will have to subtract from the allowance in the TR. In reality, the total length of each horizontal link is the real operating limit of the land circuit. This limit is 100 meters or 328 feet for the entire channel, including all the cables, cords, and jumpers that run all the way from the back of the workstation to the network hub. The 100 meters includes 10 meters for all the cords and jumpers, with the understanding that the stranded wires used in these cords have a 20% greater attenuation. Although the, strand, the uh, standard requires that all horizontal cables be solid wire, you, should safely ex you could safely exceed the 10 meters limit for user cords and jumpers by a little bit, if you were well below the 90 meters, uh, the 90 meter limit for the horizontal cabling. User cords in the work area should be routed with the same guidelines as for the horizontal cable runs. You should avoid sharp bends, kinks, and abrasions of the cable. And you should route it away from potential interference sources such as fluorescent lights and motors. Modular furniture usually requires that user cords be placed in raceways that are built into the furniture. Now remember, that the guidelines suggest a separation of 2 to 5 inches from power conductors such as the AC outlets or the mains in the furniture. Furniture manufacturers are beginning to recognize the need for uh, totally separate telecommunications raceways, so you may be able to, to specify furniture that meets this requirement. The placement of CAT 5E and uh, 6 cable is much more sensitive than lower categories. If you're still operating on a 10 base T or token ring uh, 16 network, you really do not need CAT5 performance and you may want to relax the rules a little bit. The routing of user cable in a telecommunications room will not be covered here as it was it um, as it is identical to patch cord routing, uh, which was covered in chapter 6 and 7. So now let's talk about workmanship and quality. If you build your own user cords, or if you manufacture them for others, the quality of construction is a very important factor in the performance of the cords. You should first ensure that all connectors and cable used in the assembly of the cord are certified by the manufacturer for the level of performance that you desire for the completed cord. Then, you should use proper techniques to assemble the cord for maximum performance. Performance. It is um, known to be difficult to test short lengths of cable, particularly with regard to near end crosstalk. So your best performance will, uh, your best performance guarantee is good workmanship. Basic continuity and wire map, of course, can be completely tested without regard to length. The section on patch cords in chapter eight and the earlier section on modular connectors in this chapter describe some techniques to ensure a high quality termination that will perform up to the specifications that are needed. Well that concludes chapter 9 uh, the, for the user cords and uh, patch cords. Uh, move on to take your online assessment and we'll see you back here for chapter 10.